So look, in the next few years, almost 50 superhero films are scheduled or heavily rumored to come out. That's kind of insane. And by kind of insane, I mean really insane. So today, I thought it could be fun to go through all of these, those that are confirmed and those that could happen. So I can both talk about my thoughts on them, and you can be aware of the movies that are coming out. I've talked about some of the futures of these franchises before, but I wanted to do something that's all-inclusive. And plus, a lot has changed since I made those videos. Also, I've decided to implement this little chart for this video, where each film will be placed at some point in either the fantastic, the good, the maybe, or the burning hot garbage sections. Basically, this will show visually my prediction for how good these films will be. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think any of these are going to end up in the burning hot garbage category, but you know, it's good to have it there, just in case. So all that out of the way, let's get into it. First up, Spider-Man Homecoming, arriving July 7th, 2017, which I'll be real, I'm writing this in late June, so this movie may already be out by the time this video goes up. Regardless, does it look good? Yeah, it does. But to be perfectly honest, I've kind of been getting less and less excited for this film as it goes along because of the marketing. I mean, each trailer has revealed more and more, not only of the story, but also just scenes and shots that I wish would be saved for the actual film. I actually still haven't watched the last trailer because I was like, no, I can't do any more of this. And so many clips are online, and that poster... that poster isn't great. I really don't know what Sony's problem is with Spider-Man marketing. That aside though, just as a film, I'm still looking forward to it. Tom Holland is maybe the best Spider-Man to date, Michael Keaton is one of my favorite actors, so I'm of course excited to see him in the MCU. And again, this is shaping up to be a different kind of Spider-Man film. Because these five, while they vary drastically in quality, as far as the story goes, they share a lot of the same points. I'm so happy we're finally, presumably, getting a Spider-Man villain who isn't connected to Peter Parker in some way, and he's just kind of a prick. Also, we're getting Iron Man in this, which you probably haven't noticed. I mean, they've been pretty low-key about it. Look, I am excited to see more Tony Stark, so long as he just works naturally with the story and isn't just there to steal screen time. So, Spider-Man Homecoming, I'm gonna drop right in the middle of the good section. Next, there's Thor Ragnarok, hitting cinemas November 3rd, 2017. I have no reason not to be super excited for this. If you haven't seen Hunt for the Wilder People, it's not like the best movie ever made, but it's a super fun time. I'm pretty positive that the director of that, Taika Waititi, will handle the comedy in this film perfectly. I just hope he can do the same with the massive action scenes. The premise for this is fantastic, the casting is brilliant, the trailer looks great, in case you can't tell, I'm a little bit pumped for this. Taika Waititi doing this film, I feel like is going to be similar to what Edgar Wright could have done with Ant-Man, and I can't wait to see it. I'm definitely predicting that this is going to be fantastic. After that is Justice League, on November 17th, 2017. Now this has been an interesting film to say the least, especially regarding the latest developments. Because of Zack Snyder stepping down, the completion of this film and reshoots will be done by Joss Whedon, the guy behind the Avengers, if you somehow don't know that. And while that may sound promising, don't expect this to be a Whedon Justice League film now. It's being said that he's doing it exactly the way that Snyder would have wanted it. And so do I think it'll be good? Well, look, I've talked about this at length, and the answer is maybe, which is why it's going here by the way. The trailers have looked promising, and it appears that maybe they've learned from their mistakes in the previous DC films, but there are things in the trailer that do raise some red flags. Like, I'm hoping the entire finale of this film isn't just bland, fighting an invasion in dark gray places in slow motion. And I'm hoping the story isn't overcrowded with setups and characters and whatnot. Point is, really, I'm hopeful, and I think there's a chance this could turn out great, but I've also been tricked before, so I'm a bit more cautious now. Next up, Black Panther, arriving on February 16th, 2018. Of course I'm excited for this. Come on, who isn't? The trailer that came out recently just confirmed everything I thought about this film, that being that it's probably going to be amazing. It's about one of my favorite new characters in the MCU, and one of the most interesting, and it has maybe one of the best directors working today directing it. You can check out my video on the trailer, link down below, where I go more in depth into this. But really, what can I say? Pretty much everything about this looks awesome, definitely going in the fantastic category. Up next, New Mutants on April 13th, 2018. This one actually sounds pretty interesting. Fox seems to have found their niche in making different kinds of superhero films. Deadpool, raunchy, self-aware, R-rated comedy, Logan, R-rated character study, western movie, and now New Mutants, which is apparently going to be a horror film. Now I'm not a horror movie guy at all, but recently I have been breaking a little bit through, at least for films that are a little more than just horror films, so I'll probably be seeing this. This will be a cast of younger mutants, and not the same ones we've seen in the X-Men films, great, get a breath of fresh air in there. It's also got a pretty good cast, Anya Taylor-Joy from Split, Macy Williams from Game of Thrones, and Rosario Dawson from a bunch of stuff. It's being directed by the guy who did The Fault in Our Stars, which is a film that I really like. Overall, sounding pretty good. Then, on May the 4th, in 2018, we finally get Avengers Infinity War, the culmination of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've talked before about why I think this will be great, awesome directors, great villain, promising build-up, etc., but I want to quickly touch on my one concern. Recently, 
Finally, Scarlett Johansson said in an interview that there are 62 characters in the film, and in one scene, there are 30 characters on screen together. Now, don't get me wrong, that sounds amazing to me. I mean, think the airport fight from Civil War times two, with all the Avengers and the Guardians together. How incredible does that sound? But my only concern is, what if it's too much? With 62 characters, plus a main villain who we want a bit more developed, there's definitely not going to be enough time for everyone to shine. The only reason this concern isn't really that big for me is that the Russo brothers are doing this. And they showed in Civil War that they can make a handful of characters the main focus and still give everyone something cool to do. If not character-wise, then action-wise. The thing is, this film is going to be way bigger, and I feel like some characters who I want to see more, mainly the Guardians, are going to be a bit more sidelined. I also don't know if the Russos know how to use the Guardians as well as James Gunn does. But again, like I said, these are all the negative thoughts I have. Besides that, of course I'm excited to see this. The MCU is in my top three favorite franchises of all time, and The Avengers is my favorite superhero film of all time. It lands right here on the scale. Deadpool 2 is hitting cinemas on June 1st, 2018. This is another interesting case. The first Deadpool I loved when I first saw, and I still really enjoy, if not just a little bit less to this day. However, one of the main things that I think made Deadpool work as well as it did was Tim Miller as the director, who put together those awesome fight scenes. So with him being booted from the project, that does leave me with some repercussions. However, the new director is one of the guys behind John Wick, which action-wise, that's pretty promising. We're going to be getting more of that crazy Deadpool stuff in this. Hopefully, they actually up the ante a bit on that end of things. We're getting Domino and Cable in this, which can hopefully, like I said, make this even more insane. I'm waiting until we get a first proper trailer, but making sequels to hit comedies is hard to do. It can be done, but it's hard. So fingers crossed for this one, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be good. Then, at goddamn long last, the second coming of Jesus Christ is arriving on June 15th, 2018. And by that I mean, The Incredibles 2 is coming out. This is one of my most anticipated movies of all time, and it has been since 2004, aka when I was 2-3 to three years old. As weird as it is to say, I've technically been waiting for this film basically my whole life. I just want to say, quick tangent here to explain my relation to The Incredibles. I've realized that saying, insert movie here is my favorite movie of all time, can be slippery, because sometimes I come out out of a film on such a high and I think it's the best thing ever made, and then as a lot of time passes, it's still one of my favorites, but I don't know if it is my absolute favorite, case in point, Birdman and La La Land. So from now on, if someone says I have to pick one favorite film of all time and I'm not allowed to say there are a few, which there are, I'm probably going to go with The Incredibles. Again, this can switch on almost a daily basis, but when it comes down to it, The Incredibles is always just as amazing every time I watch it, even without the insane amount of nostalgia I have for it. Just the story, the characters, the action, the style, everything is perfect in it. It's original, it's great for both kids and then later on for adults, and it's got one of the most heartfelt and relatable, at least to me, stories about family and sticking together that I've ever seen. Plus, it's just a kick-ass superhero movie. So, as if it needs to be said, I'm kind of excited for more. Brad Bird is coming back to direct, the whole cast I think is returning. I just can't wait. I don't exactly know where they're gonna go with the story. I imagine they'll go with it's about 15 years later in the movie's world as well, but I don't know. I just know that I can't wait to see more of these characters that I essentially grew up with. I'm hoping we'll get a teaser at D23 this year, and I know that when I'm sitting in the cinema and that Incredibles theme song comes on again, I'm probably gonna tear up and start cheering. So, on the scale, this is going right here. A month later, we're getting Ant-Man and the Wasp on July 6th, 2018. This is the movie where I think I'm the most sure of what the quality is going to be, and that's just good. I hope this will surprise me and blow me away, but I imagine this is going to be exactly the same for me as the first Ant-Man was, which is good and enjoyable, but nothing super special. Peyton Reed is coming back to direct, which is why I think it'll just be another fun comedy. Paul Rudd, I personally think, is one of the most likable actors working today, so I'm really excited to see more of him here. Look, if this is now a team movie with Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly, sure, that sounds like a lot of fun. I just doubt it'll be groundbreaking. Always optimistic though, so here's hoping. Then Venom is coming out on October 5th, 2018. Another weird case of a film. Firstly, just as a movie, in terms of who's involved, this doesn't sound that bad. Director of Zombieland, with Tom Hardy as the main character, that's all pretty good. But then there's so much confusion about whether or not this will be in the MCU or connect to Spider-Man at all, which if it doesn't, I don't really like. I mean, Venom and Spider-Man are kind of intertwined. Also, the villain in this film will be Carnage, which initially I was excited for because I think Carnage is a pretty awesome villain. But then when I heard another take on this, specifically from the Weekly Planet podcast, I changed my tune a bit. They mentioned on that podcast that the time for superheroes fighting a slightly bigger or more intense version of themselves was kind of over. And the finality of this film will probably just end up now being a giant, ugly CGI tendril fight, which doesn't sound too appealing to me. So look, I want to get more details on this before really judging. As of right now, I'm going to lump it in right here. 
X-Men Dark Phoenix is hitting the big screen on November 2nd, 2018. Uh, look, this is kind of on the lower side of things for me. I mean, I am one of the few people who is willing to go on record saying that they really enjoyed X-Men Apocalypse, and Days of Future Past and First Class are two of my favorite superhero films, so I, of all people, should be on board for another one of these. But after rewatching Apocalypse a few times, even though I still like it, the flaws have started to stand out more and more, specifically how kind of formulaic it is. And seeing another one of those kind of predictable standard X-Men films isn't super exciting to me. I'm sure I'll enjoy it, but right now, we're living in the time where superhero movies that try something new are the most interesting ones. So something more generic, after one that was fairly generic, I don't really know. I am excited to see the young cast again, because I love them in these roles. Well, most of them. But I hope they switch it up a bit. Because we've seen a very similar struggle between Eric and Charles now for three films. Even more if you count the old ones. If they have the same thing again, it's going to get so tedious to watch. So, putting it here on the scale, I am looking forward to it, I just hope they switch things up. Then, two days after my birthday in 2018, Sony's releasing an animated Spider-Man film. This is actually really intriguing to me, because apparently Sony wants to have an entire Spider-Man animated universe going at the same time as the live-action universe, which is interesting, to say the least. My main question is, what if the animated films start to get better than the live-action ones? That would be a bit embarrassing. As for this film specifically, it sounds pretty cool. It'll star Shamik Moore from Dope, a super underrated film that you should watch, as Miles Morales, and it also has the likes of Mahershala Ali on board. It's also being written by the directors of The Flash. I'm sorry, I mean the directors of Han Solo. I'm sorry, I mean the directors of nothing currently. Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who are two of my favorite directors and writers working today. So all in all, sounds pretty good. After this, we get Aquaman on December 21st, 2018. This is one of the DCEU movies that I'm actually the most excited for. That's mainly because of the director, James Wan. A really talented director in my opinion. He went from tons of really solid horror stuff to one of the biggest action films of all time, so I definitely think he can handle Aquaman. The cast is also pretty good, and Jason Momoa looks like he's going to be one of the standouts in Justice League, so this is going pretty close to fantastic. So then, on January 18th in 2019, and I guess spoiler alert for the movie Split here, if you don't want that twist ruined, click to this point in the video. Three, two, one. Okay. We're gonna get Glass, the sequel to both Unbreakable and Split. Now, Split was a surprisingly good thriller with an excellent performance at the helm, and Unbreakable is presumably also good. I'll be honest, I haven't seen it yet. So once I see Unbreakable, I'll probably be more hyped for this, and that twist ending in Split will probably be much more mind-blowing to me. As it is right now, I enjoyed Split, so sure, I'd like to see a sequel. Good it is. Then on February 24th, 2019, we're getting the much-anticipated, untitled Fox Marvel movie. This could be anything really, an X-Men spinoff, a new Fantastic Four film, whatever. I'll talk about some of those later, but for this specifically, we don't know, so there's nothing to say here. After that, on March 8th, 2019, we're getting a Captain Marvel film, starring Brie Larson. I'm pretty excited for this. I really like Brie Larson as an actress, and all the directors aren't really that well known. I look back at what the Russo brothers did, with them being relatively unknown, these two don't really concern me. Also, I think after Wonder Woman's huge success, Marvel is going to take note of what worked in that film and try to build off it. So overall, consider me pretty pumped. Then after that, just a month later, ironically enough, we have another film about Captain Marvel. Except this one is now called Shazam, for some reason, on April 5th, 2019. For the record, these films are going to get harder and harder to lump into categories, since now we don't know a lot about these. However, we do have some info on this one. Dwayne Johnson is of course going to be Black Adam, even though he's in everything, I still really like The Rock. I don't know if he has the chops to play a kind of conflicted villain slash anti-hero like Black Adam but we'll see. It's also rumored to be directed by the guy who did Lights Out, so yay for more horror directors making DC films. Also, I just want to say, and in the process, give a little shout out to my grandpa for being awesome, but my grandpa's favorite superhero has always been Captain Marvel, and so I kind of grew up hearing about this guy a lot, so I have some weird nostalgia for this property. So that makes me personally all the more excited. So in conclusion, this is probably going to be good. Then on May 3rd, 2019, we're getting the follow-up to Avengers Infinity War, the still untitled Avengers 4, which might be called Avengers Infinity Gauntlet, or not, I guess. Not much is known about this, except the Russos are doing it, and it's a direct follow-up to Infinity War, but it's not a part two. Infinity War, apparently, is its own contained story with beginning and end, and this is something new that ties into that. So great, I guess I'm about as excited for this as I am for Infinity War, since I'm assuming they're going to be pretty similar. Justice League 2 is coming out on June 14th, 2019, barring any changes that, considering DC's track record, could happen. Zack Snyder might direct this, although we don't really know after all this has gone down. Not really much to say about this until the first film comes out. I'm guessing Darkseid will be the main villain. Cool. Just hope this whole giant evil space god thing isn't played out by the time this rolls around. Putting this the same place I put Justice League. 
Then, Spider-Man Homecoming 2, or whatever they'll title the next Spider-Man film, is hitting cinemas on July 5th, 2019. If Homecoming's good, then sure, bring on more. They're apparently making these films in a Harry Potter-ish, John Hughes-ish way, where we see Peter Parker grow up through high school and then college and then whatever. Which sounds cool, but they'd better crank out these movies fast, because Tom Holland is not gonna look 17 forever. So this, I don't know, you can't really place a film like this good, maybe? On November 1st, 2019, an untitled DC film is scheduled for release, but it's almost definitely going to be the Batman at this point. And look, initially, you can see in older videos of mine, I was super hyped for this because Ben Affleck was directing, but then he dropped off, and I started to lose my excitement quite rapidly. But then, Matt Reeves was signed on, and having just watched Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I think that's a pretty great choice. Both the action and the deeper emotional conflicts were fantastic in that film, so seeing him taking on a Batman movie? Sure. Ben Affleck, I still really enjoy as Batman, and like I've said in previous videos, I'd love to see this go the route of Batman being stuck in Arkham Asylum and having to fight his way out, going through most of his villains. Think Die Hard with Batman characters. Come on, how cool does that sound? Even if that isn't the premise, I'm still gonna put this way up the good section. And then there's Cyborg, on April 3rd, 2020. This movie has no director, no writers, the main actor hasn't been in any films, and I don't really know Cyborg that well as a character. Frankly, there is nothing for me to say here. Hopefully it's good? I don't know. Then on May 1st, 2020, there's a currently untitled Marvel film scheduled for release. We'll probably get that reveal at this year's Comic-Con, I'd imagine, or D23. Also, just so we get them out of the way, there are two other untitled MCU movies coming out 2020. One on July 10th, and one on November 6th. I'll talk about some of the possibilities for those in a second. And finally, on June 19th, 2020, DC is trying a Green Lantern film again. This one, I imagine, might be a little more successful. One, the last one came out in 2011, so hopefully those visual effects have moved on a bit since then. And two, hopefully they get good writers, because with the last film, it had a really good director, but the script was really bad. Also, this is going to be a Green Lantern team movie, so it won't just focus on Hal Jordan, which I really like, because my favorite Green Lantern is Jon Stewart, the one I grew up with in the cartoon. So, again, we don't know much about this, but against my better judgment, I'm going to tentatively put this in the good section. Now, to wrap this up, there are some movies that have been confirmed that they're happening and just don't have a release date yet, or don't even have that, but are just heavily rumored. So, let's have a look at some of those. Firstly, The Flash. What a train wreck this production has been. First a director came on, then they left, then the director of Dope came on, then he left, then it was rumored that Robert Zemeckis was doing it, then he wasn't, then Billy Crudup apparently dropped out, then they did a rewrite of the script from Phil Lord and Chris Miller from the guy who wrote the new King Arthur movie, which by all accounts, he's no Phil Lord or Chris Miller. Now there are rumors that Lord and Miller are coming back. My god. Look, I like The Flash as a character a lot. I've really been enjoying the TV show, and the new version with Ezra Miller looks promising. But maybe this film just isn't meant to be. Put him in a team-up film with Cyborg or something, I don't know. If this is such a hard thing to put together. This is now rumored to be coming out 2020, who knows. I'm putting it right here on the scale. Then there's Justice League Dark, which originally was going to be done by Guillermo del Toro, and then wasn't, and then was being done by Doug Lyman, and then wasn't, and now... Now I don't know. It's also being called Dark Universe now for some reason. I don't know. Probably just as a big middle finger to Tom Cruise. This probably won't happen for a few years. Putting it right here. And look, for the rest of these films, I'm not going to put them on the scale, because one, it's getting very crowded, and two, some of these we know so little about that it'd be kind of silly to do so. We're also going to get a Suicide Squad 2 at some point down the road. Initially, Mel Gibson was rumored for this, that didn't pan out, maybe because he said this about Batman v Superman, or maybe because he said this, you know, who knows with that guy. But apparently, David Ayer will not be doing this, and also, Harley Quinn might not be in this, which doesn't seem like a very good idea, since she was arguably the most popular part of the first film. So at the moment, that's pretty much all we know. I'm hoping to see new characters introduced in this. These fan-made posters get me kind of excited. I like the first film more than most people, but I still don't really like it, so we'll see. But Harley Quinn and David Ayer are going to be absent because another film, Gotham City Sirens, is also in production. Like I said, this will be directed by Ayer, which isn't the best sign, but it'll be about Harley Quinn, Catwoman, and Poison Ivy, which Hey, that sounds cool. I'm also interested to see the DCEU versions of these characters, and who they would cast. Personally, I think Rebecca Ferguson could make a pretty great Catwoman. Just saying. Maybe we'll get other female DC villains like Killer Frost and Giganta. Who knows? Could be fun, don't know about the creative team though. Then Wonder Woman 2 is happening. Wonder Woman was great, I'm hyped for more. 
I'd like to see what a Wonder Woman film would look like in the modern day, after seeing her origin in the 1910s. Silver and Black is a movie that's inexplicably happening, centering around the characters of Black Cat and Silver Sable. Now look, anything can be good, but I just don't understand why this of all things is happening. There's also going to be a Hellboy film, with the sheriff from Stranger Things, and the director of some pretty decent stuff, I think. I haven't seen any of this just from what I've heard. Also, apparently, this is gonna be R-rated, so that's a good sign. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is definitely happening, with James Gunn back to direct and write, great. Guardians 1 is one of my favorite superhero films. Guardians 2 wasn't as good, but was still a lot of fun. Sign me up for more. This will focus more on the character of Adam Warlock, which is pretty awesome. Also, I imagine this will be taking one of those 2020 release dates I mentioned earlier. We're also getting a Nightwing film from the director of the Lego Batman movie. Awesome. I love that film. I love Nightwing. I'm way on board for this. As far as who to cast, people have said Zac Efron. Yeah, that could work. Personally, I think Matthew Bomer would be a good choice too. Batgirl will also be hitting cinemas soonish, from director Joss Whedon again. Joss Whedon does great work with strong female leads, and obviously pretty great work with superhero films, so this will probably turn out pretty great. Look, I've put Gambit in here, I don't really know why. I doubt this will ever actually see the light of day. I mean, this thing has been gaining and losing directors like crazy, and it was supposed to come out in October last year. So despite all the enthusiasm Channing Tatum can muster, I doubt this will ever actually happen. There's also been talk of an X-Force movie for a while now. Personally, I think they'll probably turn that into Deadpool 3 in 2021 or something. People have speculated about a Nova movie. Could be cool. This won't happen, but spoilers for the first Guardians of the Galaxy. If Peter Serafinowicz hadn't died there, I would love to see a Peter Serafinowicz, John C. Riley space buddy comedy Nova film. Is that just me? A new Fantastic Four movie will inevitably happen, either with Fox in like seven years or so when they're forced to, or if they don't do it, the rights go back to Marvel. I'm actually planning on making a whole video on how to make a good Fantastic Four film, so I'll save most of my thoughts for then. But I mean, come on. Either hire someone very talented and just give them full control, or just give it to Marvel. It's not like this is a hit franchise for you anyway, Fox. Apparently the latest rumor is that they want to make this more kid-friendly, starring Reed Richards and Sue Storm's two kids and the thing in Human Torch, to make it more similar to The Incredibles. Considering Fox's past track record with this franchise, that all sounds like it could end up being terrible very easily. Now a while back, Sony wanted to do a Sinister Six movie, if you recall. You might remember that two hour long trailer for it that was called The Amazing Spider-Man 2. If they make this now, it won't be set in that universe, thankfully. So these villains can have more interesting origins than we literally all came from Oscorp. But again, Sony doesn't have the greatest track record with Spider-Man, and this whole separate, or maybe not separate, who knows, universe that they're making has me a bit concerned. DC has talked about a Lobo movie for a while now. I think thanks to the success of Deadpool, this will probably actually happen now, and probably be R-rated. Great maybe, if you get the right team behind it. The Black Widow movie has been rumored for years now, and maybe thanks to Wonder Woman, this will finally get off the ground. I mean, a full-on spy film in the MCU sounds great to me, but Scarlett Johansson's box office numbers as of late haven't been, let's just say, super assuring, so this could really go either way. Then there's this Booster Gold and Blue Beetle movie that's been up in the air for a while. I mean, this sounds like a fun idea. I doubt we'll see it before 2021, though. And finally, Man of Steel 2. Will it ever happen? Probably. Will George Miller actually direct it? Probably not. Rumors recently have said that Brainiac will probably be the villain. I think now that Wonder Woman worked out so well, if Justice League then also works and the return of Superman is well received, then this movie will be fast tracked to release. I'm sorry, my brain at this point is like mush. I don't want to talk about upcoming superhero films for a long time now. So those were my thoughts on all the upcoming superhero movies. Which of these are you most excited for? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.